Infinite Opportunities helps you learn more about the wide range of enriching opportunities at Pennsylvania's 14 state system universities. This week, we'll hear from students across the state system about the individual opportunities they are experiencing at their universities. But first, we'll hear from Bloomsburg University's president, David Soltz. Hello, I'm Frank Brogan, the Chancellor of the Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education. We have a very special guest here with us, Dr. David Soltz. Dr. Soltz is the president of Bloomsburg University, one of our 14 universities in the state system. He is uh, over seven years in his tenure as president of Bloomsburg, mm -hmm. and he comes to us with a long, illustrious background in higher education, serving in a variety of capacities, including provost and vice president of academic affairs at Central Washington University. So, Dr. Soltz, welcome. We're glad to have you. Well, thank you, Chancellor Brogan. I'm delighted to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about Bloomsburg and what makes it such a remarkable place? Well, it's a wonderful place, and we actually just finished celebrating our 175th anniversary. And we had uh, special lectures, cultural performances, outstanding faculty giving lectures, uh, a gala to celebrate it. And we go all the way back to 1839 when we started out in a little log schoolhouse. So we, we, we stretch pretty far back. Uh, we're on Interstate 80 sort of not quite in the middle of nowhere, but we're about uh, 45 minutes south of Wilkes-Barre Scranton area and uh, easy access to New Jersey, New York City, Philadelphia. The university is in the only incorporated town in Pennsylvania, the town of Bloomsburg, and they're very proud of that. We're known as the College on the Hill because we're only one block up from the main downtown. With 10,000 students, about 9,300 undergraduates, half live on campus, and another 30 to 40 percent live in the historic downtown part of Bloomsburg. So it's very much a residential feel, very much a residential campus. Well, our system, of course, has an illustrious history serving the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, 14 universities scattered throughout the Commonwealth. And Bloomsburg, of course, at 175 years of age, is a jewel in that crown. Tell us a little bit about the student population at Bloomsburg. We're a, a very heavy, emphasized, student-oriented system uh, right. of higher education. Tell us a little bit about how you at Bloomsburg uh, propose to become and remain student-focused. Uh, like we're very much a student-focused university with an emphasis on undergraduate education. Uh, a lot of very strong programs, our strong areas are health science because we have great partnerships with Geisinger Geis Health Systems only six miles away, uh, very strong business programs, education programs, and really a very broad comprehensive set of, set of degrees. We have a number of different programs for our students uh, that, that encourage student success, student completion. One is our unique general education program known as MyCore, and this is an outcomes-based general education program that is tied to the student's major. So it both prepares them for lifelong learning, but it also has more of a focus on the major than a typical gen ed program. It also allows for experiential learning where students can get what we call general education points mm -hmm. outside of the classroom. For example, doing a Habitat for Humanity project at spring break could generate some credit for civic engagement in the gen ed program. So we're very excited about that because we feel it prepares students extremely well for their first career and also for the lifelong learning. Well, of course, Bloomsburg has a tremendous reputation for being student-focused, student-centered, and those are just some great ideas that you're involved in at Bloomsburg today. Also, another hallmark opportunity at Bloomsburg is the ability to create collaborations with other institutions of higher education, right. be they one of our other 13 universities in our system, now serving over 110,000 students, or some of our community college partners around the state, and recently signed an agreement Bloomsburg and Harrisburg Community College in something really quite unique at a day and time where the world of work is looking for more and more by way of leadership skills, an applied degree in technical leadership with Harrisburg Community College. Can you tell us about that? Well, certainly. It's a, it's a very exciting degree that we developed about three years ago. It's designed to serve students who've gone on and gotten a two-year applied degree from a community college and they're in the workforce typically and they want to move up and move into supervisory positions, leadership positions. So we offer the degree on the community college campus. 
We started at Lehigh Carbon Community College, and we have about 60 students who have been in the program there over three years. Uh, next, we opened it at Reading Area Community College. Uh, Harrisburg Area Community College is next, and we're signing that agreement right now. And we also plan to offer it at City College of Philadelphia and Northampton. So these collaborations are incredibly important and really, I think, give us as a system and our partners the opportunity to serve even more students and in very important ways to meet the needs of the 21st century. And I'm really excited as the chancellor uh, to see the collaboration with Harrisburg, a premier community college in the state. And I know that this technical leadership degree is going to turn out ultimately people who are going to change the face of the Commonwealth, uh, make it a better place for all of us to live. I wanted to touch uh, very briefly, but very importantly, on the issue of fundraising. Having been a university president, I know, as do many of us, the importance of not only the money we receive from the state of Pennsylvania to support our students and our faculty, that which is generated by our students in tuition and fees, but also you can't say enough about private fundraising. And I know Bloomsburg right now is uh, moving into a, a zone of getting ready for a capital campaign. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, exactly so. We're very excited about it. Uh, the campaign is really focused on developing programs and scholarships and to a secondary extent facilities. But in 2011, we received a $1.7 million donation, which was the largest at the time for us that started the Ziegler Institute for Professional Development. And that led us to creating something called Professional U, where we focus on every student, they have to ramp it up to this stage, having a career-related opportunity each of their four years, culminating with an internship or an undergraduate research experience or student teaching. And private funding has been very important to us in developing this. Uh, both the College of Education and the College of Business have uh, professional development institutes. We're developing two more in the other colleges. And also in this campaign, there's some major focuses on uh, encouraging, uh, recruiting, retaining outstanding faculty. So we'll soon be announcing our first endowed professorship with, with a donation of $1.9 million to support that professorship, and also a, a distinguished professorship, and we've set up a number of uh, faculty fellows as well. So in this campaign, we're focusing on outstanding teacher scholars, faculty, and student success and student development. We're it really sounds, excited. Uh, it sounds yeah. very exciting and, yeah. of course, incredibly important to the future of Bloomsburg and the students who you serve. So much success with that campaign, and we know great right. things are going to occur. Also very exciting. Uh, for Bloomsburg is the fact that your College of Business is moving for reaccreditation. Accreditation, of course, in so many professional fields is a critical mainstay of what we do in higher education. All of our universities are fully accredited by the middle state's accrediting body, but many times individual colleges can have their own unique accreditation. Tell us about your College of Business accreditation. Okay. Well, yeah, we're very pleased that our College of Business received AACSB International Reaccreditation. We were initially accredited in 2004, so this is our second five-year reaccreditation. Uh, only 5% of all the business programs in the world have AACSB accreditation. So it's really the hallmark of excellence and continuous improvement. Uh, it sounds terrific, and you've got a great reputation out there in uh, your College of Business. And uh, this reaccreditation, I think, will be a cakewalk for Bloomsburg. Yeah. But it's an important status to hold in a very competitive area. Uh, one last question. Uh, strategic planning in these days and times is obviously yeah. very important. Public sector, private sector, no more important than right here in our own state university system as each of our 14 brothers and sisters are trying to find their rightful place in the world of higher education in one of the most competitive states in the nation relative to the number of higher education institutions. You do something I think which is very exciting and very unique. You do some planning grants in the world of strategic planning. Tell us about that if you will. Yeah, well it's very exciting. It's something I started four years ago as a way to implement our strategic plan and what I do is set aside up to a hundred thousand dollars each year and that's matched by the Bloomsburg University Foundation dollar for dollar. So through a competitive process we encourage collaborative multidisciplinary projects that we feel can move the institution forward and become institutionalized. One example is uh, the STEM Magnet High School that we established two years ago. 
that had its initial start with one of these strategic planning grants. And now we have multiple business and industry partners, and we're serving seven different high schools. Well, it's a great way to incentivize yeah. good strategic planning, right. and I know Bloomsburg will be the great beneficiary of it. And Dr. Souls, I wish we had more time today to give you a chance to talk about truly one of our great universities in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Bloomsburg University. Thank you for your service, and special thanks to everybody at Bloomsburg for the remarkable work that they do each and every day. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. My parents always said that a bridge is only useful if it can be crossed. At Edinburgh, I found a university that connects who I am to who I want to be. A school that's affordable with excellent professors and nationally recognized undergraduate and graduate programs who give personal attention to my success. Edinburgh is also a place with great traditions and big time school spirit. Edinburgh University, it's the bridge to your destination. Choose excellence, choose Edinburgh. Apply online at edinburgh.edu. Why did you choose Lock Haven University Clearfield? Because it's convenient, it's affordable, and the faculty's awesome. Because I'm getting a great education that's close to home. It's the right size and right fit for our students. At LHU Clearfield, I get so much more than I pay for. It's for the friendly student atmosphere and I love coming here. It's a great learning environment. Working at LHU Clearfield allows me to help our students achieve their goals. Because it'll help me get a great career. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Bloomsburg University to hear from students about the inspiration and confidence they gained from their educational opportunities. My name is Melissa Galan. I currently live in Hazleton, Pennsylvania, and I am a communication studies major. Just being at Bloomsburg University, and I know the slogan is, you know, be you at be you, but that's exactly it. So with my classes and working especially for Aubrey um, under the University Advancement Division and I've learned a great deal about myself. I've learned the things that I like to do, some things that I don't like to do, um, things that I would like to see in my future and other things that I wouldn't like to see in my future, um, but it, it's all been a learning experience. Interacting with the alumni, especially the donors, because I mean, we work directly with the donors. It's been a, a whirlwind of experiences, emotions, just, it, it's been very inspirational actually, because you get to meet these people and they've already, um, they've already put their lives together, um, they already have their careers, they're pursuing the things that they always dreamed of pursuing. And it's, it's great when you can be around a group of people that you can use as an example for yourself. I can take whatever it is that I learned here from my classes, from my job, and apply it somewhere else and really be able to reflect on the things that I was able to gain here, knowledge-wise, experience-wise, and see if I can really put it to the test. So I'm from a really small town, it's Mifflin Town, PA. One of the reasons that I came to Bloomsburg was because it has kind of that atmosphere that I'm used to. It's a small town, big enough for me to feel like, you know, I'm somewhere new and somewhere exciting, but small enough that I could feel comfortable and at home. I'm majoring in English and psychology. Um, I took a general psych course, fell in love. Um, so that was really my first passion. But then I took an English course where uh, I read Virginia Woolf, I fell in love, thought, hey, you know, I can do this. You know, after reading her piece, A Room of One's Own, I, I saw myself writing something like that in the sense that, you know, I could be confident. I could uh, instill my beliefs in a piece of writing in a way that would make people want to read it, want, make them want to learn more. And so just her, her confidence, her writing style, um, that was really an initial inspiration to get me started. Being a psychology major really helps my writing just by allowing me to know more about people, you know, allowing me to know more about uh, communities and society. So I think I try to use my writing to better teach psychology, but I also use psychology to uh, make my writing a lot better. So I've developed that, that writer's identity uh, over the course of being at Bloomsburg. 
I've been able to do so many things that I couldn't do at home. I never expected to go to Africa. I never expected to gain the confidence to go to England, which I did last Thanksgiving. Um, you know, it's really allowed me to explore the world and explore myself in ways that I wouldn't be able to do at home. I think taking that step outside of my initial culture is what is really important about coming to Bloomsburg, that it gave me the opportunity to, to move on and see what's out there. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Kutztown University to learn how a student was given the opportunity to gain practical experiences in his field, both at home and abroad. When I was in high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do in college, what you know, I wanted to study, until my last semester of, of high school. I took physics, and you know, right away I knew that's what I wanted to do you know, for the rest of my life. So I. I picked physics as my major, I came into Kutztown, I did really well the first year, and Dr. Doss asked me if I wanted to do research with him, and I jumped right on that opportunity. I said, absolutely. So I've been doing research with him for about two, two and a half years now, and later this year, I'm going to be submitting a paper to a top physics journal on which I will be the primary author. So I'm really excited to get that submitted and put in, and hopefully it'll be published before I graduate. Last year, I applied to a, a grant called the NIEG Undergraduate Research Grant. It's a student grant, and I applied for it so I could go to a international conference in California for physics and uh, participate in a poster session there. So I'd say around 10 people came around, including you know PhDs, uh, grad students, recent uh, PhD graduates. You know, they came around and asked me about my poster, and I was able to answer all their questions and defend it very well. I actually went there while I was at a physics internship this summer down at Duke. And also the second half of this internship was in Geneva, Switzerland, working at CERN, the home of the Large Hadron Collider. So I would definitely say that being able to go to this conference and receiving that grant helped me get to that physics internship, which led me directly to CERN, the Large Hadron Collider. If I had to narrow it down, I think the highlight or the most exciting part of my experience this summer would be the uh, Higgs boson uh, update seminar that they held. And this was held in an auditorium that could hold about 300 people. Basically what happened was they announced the discovery of a new particle and it's, it's the Higgs boson, which is the particle that gives every, uh, which gives all matter in the universe its mass. So that was an amazing experience to be in the same room with all these Nobel Prize winning physicists and famous you know, scientists and physicists. So uh, that, that was very interesting. I, I, it still, it, it just felt surreal. I can't explain it any other way. I like being a Kutztown student because of the amount of tension I get from professors, not just me specifically, but everyone. You, you have a greater opportunity to interact with your professors, ask them questions, you know. It's, it's, it's a nice, uh, kind of like a family environment being here in the physics department. You know, that's, that's how close we are. We all know each other. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a great way to learn. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. What is a warrior? At East Stroudsburg University, it's someone who rises above the rest. A warrior is knowledgeable, a critical thinker, a planner, a designer, an engineer, an artist, a writer, and a leader. 
A warrior is someone who is strong, adventurous, and engaged in their surroundings. You could be a warrior. Join us at East Strasburg University and get an outstanding, affordable, accessible education coupled with real-world experiences such as internships, clinical assignments, community service, and student teaching. There's also ESU's Innovation Center, which offers students entrepreneurial opportunities that extend well beyond ESU's campus into the regional, national, and global markets. Why wait? Check out ESU's nearly 60 undergraduate programs and more than 20 graduate degree programs and learn why being a warrior is so much more than you'd ever imagined. Call us today to set up an appointment with an admissions counselor or to take a tour. Make East Stroudsburg University your first choice and catch the warrior spirit today. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Millersville University to meet the first student in the new Doctorate of Education in Educational Leadership program. Hello, we're here today at the internationally renowned Milton Hershey School to meet Millersville University's first ever doctoral student, Matt Campbell. This is such a historic moment for Millersville University. Not only are we becoming a doctoral granting university, but we are going out of the gate with two new programs. The Doctorate of Education in Educational Leadership in partnership with Shippensburg University and the Doctoral of Social Work in partnership with Kutztown University. Matt is the elementary school assistant principal here at Milton Hershey School. He was the first to be admitted and the first to commit to our brand new doctorate in educational leadership. And that makes him pretty significant to the university. Let's see what Matt has to say. So Matt, we are so excited and honored that you are our first enrolled doctoral student at Millersville University. Tell me a little bit about what you do here at the internationally renowned Milton Hershey School. Well, I started here over 18 years ago as a, as a counselor uh, in the elementary division. The last uh, eight or nine years, I've transitioned to scholastic administration, and I've been an assistant principal both in the middle school and now at the elementary school. Now, at this point in your career, why did you decide to enroll in a doctoral program? There's two things that caught my attention um, when I heard about the program. The first one was poverty and how um, that was going to be a main focus of the program. We here serve students from low income and their families, and that's such a, a passion for me and for what I do. One of our presidential goals is to increase the use of technology and really give our kids the skills for the 21st century and allow them to really use that to uh, incorporate in their future learning. So Matt, let's think ahead. You're all finished with your doctorate. What are you going to do with it? Do you have any aspirations beyond what you're doing now? Maybe we'll have to have you come back and uh, teach in the faculty. Well, that would be interesting. I don't, you know, you never know what down the road what's going to happen. Exactly. But, um, uh, you know, being able to share that, that knowledge base, I think, is going to be very important. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Indiana University of Pennsylvania to meet a student who researches kidney regeneration. My name is Estefania Alba, and my major is biochemistry. I'm originally from Mexico, but I moved to the United States around uh, sixth grade. When I was looking through schools, uh, the financial factor was a major factor, and also the research. Uh, as well as the interaction between professors and students. Financially, IUP made the most sense and it would give me the greatest chance to graduate. The biology department has weekly seminars, so I just happened to see a flyer about kidney regeneration. And at the moment, I thought that was really interesting, so I went to see his seminar. And from then on, I thought the research was amazing because he uses zebrafish as a model system to figure out how kidney disease works. Now what's interesting about zebrafish is that their kidney regenerates. Uh, in humans, that doesn't happen. So trying to figure out how that works 
could maybe lead to therapy or possible um, translation of way to move it to humans. When you see people that are sick or people with diseases and you yourself are healthy, it kind of makes it into a perspective that all oh, the experiences that I'm having they might not be able to have due to this illness or this disease that's holding me back. I think going into medicine will enable me to maybe help those people. That way they can have the same experiences as I do and enjoy life better. I think uh, coming to IEP was definitely the best choice that I could have made. I've had great experiences and taken advantage of a lot of opportunities that IUP has to offer. A lot of people underestimate how many opportunities are out there and I think that even if you feel underqualified you should still go and apply or take advantage of those opportunities because you never know and it could turn out great. Coming up next, explore more opportunities offered at the universities in Pennsylvania's state system of higher education. One decision, endless possibilities. California University of Pennsylvania opens your mind to more than 130 programs of study, programs that matter to education, to healthcare, to technology, to the future of our world. California University of Pennsylvania, because the world is waiting for you. Enroll now for our master's degree in applied math at calu.edu. Welcome back to Infinite Opportunities. Next, we go to Slippery Rock University to see how a transfer student is pursuing her opportunity for success. Hi, my name is Krista Kluke and I'm a sophomore exercise science major. I'm an SRU success story because I'm a hard worker and I've had a goal and I'm determined to get this goal. I chose SRU because it's closer to home and it's a state school so it was more affordable and for the exercise science program because it is so well known. What I love about my major so far is that it's so active and involved and I really am starting to like my professors and they seem like they all really care. I'm learning about my body and how I can use it with clients and for myself. <laughs> Since transferring to SRU, my life has been a pill loop of happiness. I feel like I can branch out more here because it is a larger campus. It's really been nice to meet a bunch of different people in my major and not my major. SRU has definitely offered a lot more diversity than my previous institution. My transfer to SRU has been smooth and successful mainly because I live on an LLC, which is the Exercise Science LLC, and it's helped me academically and socially as well as getting involved in clubs on campus. I'm involved in Exercise Science Society, like my shirt says, Pre-Physical Therapy Club, let's be which means First Year Leader Scholar Program. Um, I also volunteered for Special Olympics, which I really loved, and will continue that for the rest of my years here, as well as uh, intramural volleyball. SRU has prepared me for a future in my field by giving me such a well-known program so that I can you know, apply for grad schools everywhere with a strong background in exercise science. My name is Krista Klukin, and I'm an SRU success story. Come back next week to learn more of the infinite opportunities at the state system's 14 universities or visit us online.